This video is how to do a modified box plot using Excel. Excel has many wonderful features, but one of them is not the ability to do a box plot. In Excel, what we're going to be using is a stacked bar chart with error lines or error bars for the whiskers. They're not truly error lines in the, in the sake of errors in the graph. It's just those are the functions that allow you to be able to graph the bottom 25% and the upper 25% of your graph. Realizing a true box plot or box and whiskers is going to use interquartile range multiplied by one and a quarter with asterisks for your outliers. In this scenario, we're not going to go ahead and use that part of the feature to go with it. We're just literally going to graph 100% of our data. So in this example from Pete Steiner, we have Jane's record of how many customers she helped every half hour that she was on the job. So this is a record of the actual data. We're going to use the minimum, the quartiles, and the maximums, and the formulas to go with them. And so the column that you see next to this here, we actually typed the formulas in and worked on those. If we're going to graph this, we know that the minimum number of customers she helped was 3, and the maximum was 17, so between 3 and 17. Our middle 50% were between 5 and 12 with a median of 8. To graph this in Excel, I said we were going to use a stacked bar. So our boxes in the stacked bar chart are going to come from these three ranges. Now you don't have to follow the steps that I'm doing right here. This is simply for illustration. So our bottom one is going to go from 0 up to quartile 1. Your next box is going to go from the median down to quartile 1. And the last one is between quartile 3 and the median. So those are our three boxes that we're going to do. The values that are associated on those are 5 minus 0 gives us 5. So the bottom one is quartile 1 minus 0. So equals quartile 1 minus 0 is going to give us 5. Our next one up is going to be our median minus quartile 1. So 8 minus 5 is 3. So our median value minus quartile 1 equals our median value minus quartile 1 is 3. Our top value is going to be 12 minus 8, so quartile 3 minus the median, it's going to be 4. So quartile 3 minus the median is going to be quartile 3 minus the median is going to give you 4. When you add all of those up, you are going to find that the value totals 12, which totally makes sense because the upper part of your stacked box or stacked bar chart should be at 12. I'm going to delete the 12 because I don't want to graph it. Our lines, we're going to use error lines. Like I said, don't panic over the word error lines or error bars because they're not actually errors. It's the feature we're using to make them happen. So we're going to need the length of, again, this is simply for illustration purposes, we're going to need to go from quartile 1 down to the minimum. So quartile 1 minus the minimum, quartile 1 minus the minimum equals... And that should be a distance of 2, two which makes sense. 5 minus 3 is 2. Next one we're going to do is we're going to do the upper bar. So we're going to go between the maximum and quartile 3, our upper 25% of our data, minus quartile 3. So that's going to be equals maximum minus quartile 3. So that's going to have a value of 5. Those are the important pieces that we're going to need from a data standpoint. Now let's actually do the graph in Excel. To do the graph, we are going to need to highlight our boxes, so our stacked bar chart area. Insert bar chart 
and stacked bar. If you'll notice here, that's not quite what we expected to see. So go ahead and do switch row and column. Starting to look a little more like we had planned on looking. So we have our red area and we have our green area. But it assigned the bottom box to a color of blue, which we don't want that. So you're going to go ahead and delete that. So in your chart tools at the top, you're going to click on Format. You're going to do Shape Fill and turn it to No Fill. And you're going to do Shape Outline and change it to No Outline. So we now have our middle 50% of our data blocked off. The next piece of it is going to be our error bar. So I want to put an error bar of a length of 2 that's attached within here. So stay clicked in this now white clear box. Click on Layout. Click on Error Bars. Click on More Error Options. And you'll see that it put a line in there for us. Well, that's not quite the size line that we're looking for. We're looking for it to start from there. So we're going to click on minus. Well, that's starting to look a little bit better. And we said that our value on that should be 2. Well, that happens to be a fixed value of 2, which would work. For future reference, when we go ahead and do multiple graphs, we're going to do custom. We're going to do specific value. And because this is the bottom side, this is our negative error value, I'm going to hit the Tab key, and I'm going to say that that value of 2 should go in there, the value of E16. I'm going to close out of that. For our upper line, we're going to want to attach it to the green box. So on our upper line, we're going to click on the green box. We're going to go Error Bars, More Error Bars, and we're going to do a plus. So if you'll see now, it does it did give you a plus, but it did a fixed value of 2. So let's do a custom, click on specific value. This is the positive side, so we are going to click on where a value of 5 is found in E17 and do OK and close it. Now we'll find here that our median is found at 8. Our interquartile range goes as between 5 and 12. Our minimum value is at 3, and our maximum value is at 17. It seems like a long and tedious process. I'm going to do a quick little version of it as a secondary follow-up video without the examples on it, so that you can see that it really is much faster to do once you've done them before, and you, you don't have to go through all of the steps that I had shown within this one. Hope that helps. See you next